I'll tell you the story of our first graduate who went all the way through 12 years of Sudbury education. Wow. And I have her permission to tell her story. I also <laughs> have her permission for other things, which I'll let you know. Her name is Jamie. And I vividly remember my first meeting with her mom because she was concerned that Jamie was eating too much candy as a little girl. And I, I was telling the story at a library event where I was presenting the school to people we were just starting. This is 15, 16 years ago. I was talking about the, I'm a psychotherapist licensed in several states and I was telling her about that I have real concerns. I'm very interested in systems and that I really mm -hmm. felt that the school system has many systemic problems and very comparable to the same systemic problems that we see in families of addiction. And uh, she said, the mom said to me, oh my goodness, I'm so afraid my daughter's, you know, really having a hard time with candy and sweets. And I said, well, you know, part of the reason I started this is I saw Sudbury as such a healthy system. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the rules of the traditional addictive system are don't feel, don't tell, don't trust. And the opposite happens in Sudbury schools. You know, people mm. learn to talk about feelings, they learn to trust, and they learn to tell the truth because it's a non judgmental system. They don't feel mm. shamed or afraid to speak their truth. And so, anyway, she right away, the mother enrolled both of her children. Jamie will tell you, as she told everybody for years now, she played her entire childhood. She mm -hmm. came to Sudbury, she got it right away, I'm free, I can play, and, and she did that for years and years. At one point she decided she always wanted to fly, and she and I very strongly related in that way, because I always wanted to fly. Not with mm. apparatus, but just fly. But she decided that her first step would be with some sort of apparatus and see how that felt. So she spent a good several months getting money from school meeting to buy, she bought that plumber piping stuff and she created mm. wings and <laughs> strapped it onto herself and created a flying machine. Mm. And, you know, made a game of it with the kids, but she went through the whole process of figuring out what apparatus she would need, how much it would cost, where she would purchase it. And she went through the school meeting, getting permission to do this and, and getting funding that she needed. Mm -hmm. Long story short, Jamie never intended to go to college. She just loved her life and she wanted to keep playing and doing things that were fun for her. But by the time she was about 16, she said, you know, I think oh, now she, this, uh, until 16, she had never had a class in her life. She was reading, mm -hmm. writing, extremely bright, could hold conversations on many topics, but did not in any way take any class that was offered or want any class. But when she was about 16 and a half, it would have been middle of her junior year, what would have been her junior year if she were in a traditional system, she decided she'd take a college class to see what college was like. So she took a writing mm -hmm. class because she always enjoyed writing. She wrote little stories as a little girl, she, you know, just everything play related stories. And she loved the class and she loved the college environment. And she did it as a dual enrollment student. She was at our school but she could go one day a week to the college and take her class and work on her papers. And then she took a philosophy class and she loved <laughs> philosophy because she loved philosophy and psychology because she was always talking with other kids about her theories about life and living and why she liked Sudbury so much. And long story short, by the time 
she finished the following year, which would have been a year and a half of taking classes. I think she took four classes at the community college. She decided she was going to go to college and kind of late in terms of when people usually apply to college. But she wrote a paper, I'm guessing it was about 34 typed pages Wow. about her learning experiences in a Sudbury school. And she sent it to four colleges that she thought she wanted to go to, Eckerd in Florida, Muhlenberg where her parents had gone, Brown wow. University in Rhode Island, and I'm forgetting the fourth one. But three of the four gave her academic scholarships over a hundred thousand dollars each based mm. on this paper that she wrote talking about how she felt like she had learned so many skills that her peers did not have clearly she had a voice that was loud and strong for an 18 year old young woman and the colleges saw it and as i said gave her major scholarship money academic scholarships. Cool. She had no transcript because Sudbury schools don't require coursework. It's right. all self-directed right. learning. Like I forgot to say that Jamie has told me like two years ago that I have permission to send her paper to anyone that would like to read what she wrote to the colleges. So if that anybody was, yeah. wants to contact me at the Jersey Shore Free School, I will send it because it gives you such a wonderful feeling of how different an education she received, but the competence level that she achieved. And it's yeah, really yeah. very well done. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg.